guys. So, first up, I totally forgot that this was a thing where you click who you want to begin with, but previously, when I first started it, there was only Shu. But what I want to bring attention to is the fact that his title is The Emotional Drama King, but I didn't see that at all. So, I don't know. It's, it's a thing. And I found out the epilogue, so now we can get started on that. And there's supposed to be three chapters of that, which means it'll probably be a couple videos at the most. Um, to finish this off. And as far as my next series, I mentioned it in the last video, but I'm not sure if it's going to work out. Because my computer is stupid. <laughs> Apparently. My laptop is dumb. Um, because I, try I tried to record a little bit of it yesterday, and it was moving so slow. And I don't know if it was the game itself, or if it was my my computer because the other game I tried to play did something similar so it's weird I don't know I'll have to figure out a backup plan for now so um, we're gonna get started and I have I'm very nervous about this if you remember what I said at the end of the last um, video was that this is gonna be a really difficult difficult time for 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 all of us because things are going to be happening. Some very dark and intense things that I don't think I'm ready for. But we're going to go ahead and go for it. I love how much of an idiot I can be sometimes about things. Because apparently it's sitting right in my face what I needed to happen. Basically it's telling me what I'm supposed to be doing. Or like that I basically just need to hit read story. So to refresh everyone's mind um, this epilogue is taking place five months after the incident at the mansion, you know, where he actually comes back to life and is a phoenix now. So, let me read this little spill for you guys before we get started. Um, it's been five months since the incident of Care Mansion. Your relationship with Shu is going well, and you even bring him along to meet your family. But there are still some things you feel Shu is keeping from you about his new life. An incident ends up bringing the two of you closer. But it may also serve as a dark omen for the future. I'm so nervous right now. <laughs> but we're gonna do it. We're gonna get through a little bit of it today. Alright, here we go. Chapter 1. <sighs> Memories of love. Doesn't that sweet? I have a bad feeling about how this is gonna end now. <laughs> okay, here we go. I squint against the setting sun's light streaming in through my windshield. Oh my god, he is wearing something completely different. Nice. I'm sorry that I can't drive well enough yet. Man, I feel like such a lame boyfriend right now. <laughs> this isn't the first time she has said this, nor will it probably be the last. Shoo, it's fine. I don't mind driving. In fact, I'd enjoy it, and I haven't gotten to do it in a while, so it works out. Shu had explained to me that he never really wanted to learn how to drive, since he thought walking was easier and healthier anyway. I glanced over at Shu in the passenger seat, but he still seems to be pouting. I wish my parents would have taught me. He, br he barely speaks above a whisper, but the moment the words out of his mouth, I understand why he seems so upset. I turn my attention back to the road, but place my hand on top of Shu's and give it gives it a squeeze. In the past few months, she has been trying to move on from his problems with his parents. But it's time like this, I realize it still really affects him. If it really bothers you so much, maybe I could teach you some time. Maybe even this weekend, since I'll have the car. Really? Well, maybe it's still uncool to get lessons from your girlfriend, but... I want to be able to help you out sometimes too and be the best man or uh, best man for you that I can be sorry that F is like hidden in, in the background <laughs> it's not really a big deal but thanks she says things like this so casually and I still can't get over how they make me feel when he does but won't your dad think it's lame Kayo will probably no definitely tease me don't worry about it. Dad will be happy to see you trying to get to better yourself. He's not going to judge you like that, and Ko isn't like that either. I give his hand a squeeze. Try to lighten up. Try to light up some. 
I like it a lot better when you're smiling. <laughs> huh? Oh, I see. She looks down at his hands for looking at the window and after a surge of affection for this gentleman. Not long after that, we slowly came to stop in front of my father's house. Is this really it? Yeah, why? Oh, you were probably expecting something bigger. Well, yeah. <laughs> Dad isn't really like that. He does have other homes in Japan and around the world, but he doesn't really like big houses where no one ever sees each other. Especially because he's hardly home in the first place. I'm caught out of the car when the front door swings open. I see it as someone familiar come running towards me with open arms. Kaya? Ori. I catch my little sister in a big hug and she squeezes me tight. I look up to see that my father is standing in the doorway smiling. Hi, Dad. I'm glad to see you, Ori. I haven't. I still haven't found a voice for her dad yet. So we're gonna go with that voice or something close to it. Kayo finally pulls away and looks up at me. I missed you so much. I hear the cat the last time I almost said cat door. <laughs> cat door. I hear the car door close behind me and Kayo peeks around me. Oh you brought Shu too? Hi Shu Hi Kayo. She looks at my dad and I swear he looks paler. Hello Mrs. Sh Cinema. <laughs> it's been a while, Shu. Come in, come in. Dinner's almost ready. Kayo asked to cook it herself tonight. I look like a Shu and our eyes meet. There's no need to be nervous, Shu. That's why I try to commu that's what I try to communicate to him. I can't stop smiling and finally a smile spreads over his lips. Kayla immediately begins to tug at my arm though and I let her lead me to the house. We were all sitting down in the living room chatting about our daily lives. That's a lot of liquor in there. All kinds of liquor sitting around the TV. It's kind of cute though, this whole setup. Kayla arrives to go check on dinner, but before she leaves the kitchen she bends down a little for something in my ear. <laughs> look, how, look at her face when she says this. No hanky panky while you guys are in the house. Don't forget my room is right next to door to yours. Kayo. Kayo just smiles at me instantly before continuing to the kitchen. I very pointedly avoid looking at Shu next to me. Ori, why are you all red? <laughs> no reason. Before my father can ask me, I quickly change the subject. After a nice dinner, we all sit back down and Dad looks at me. I stare back at him, questioning when he speaks. Ori, would you go and get that photo out of my office, the red one, please? Okay, but... You're not going to show shoes pictures of me when I was younger or anything, are you? Of course, I don't want to show off my wonderful daughters. <laughs> With a sigh, I pull myself up from the sofa and walk off into my father's office. I go into my father's office and pull out a desk pull out a desk drawer where he keeps his albums. My father is a sentimental man at, at times, and I know he likes to look at the photos of us when work gets stressful. I've even caught him doing it, though I've never let on. When I open the drawer, though, on top of the albums, I find a pic. Oh, is it gonna be a mom? Cause I feel like it's gonna be a mom, or the woman who created you. I find a picture from I've never seen before. Curious, I take it out and look carefully at it. It's a photo of my stepfather looking very young, maybe in his early 20s. And in the photo with, yep, that was right. And in the picture with him is Shizuka. I do the math quickly and, what? But they said, they said they only met after I was already born. Were they lying to me? Was, was even my dad lying to me? Oh dear. I hear footsteps then and I look toward the sound to see my father approaching. Did you already forget where I keep the albums, Ori? But when my father sees the expression on my face, he quickly moves, his eyes quickly move to what's in my hand. Kayo head peeks from behind him and I see Shu appear behind her. Sis, what's taking so long? Kayo, I'm sorry to ask this so suddenly, would you please go to your room? K 
Kaya looks a bit taken aback, but after reading the room, she slowly nods. See you guys later. Once she walks out of the room, Shu looks back at us. Should I be going too? No, it's fine. In fact, maybe you should hear this. Dad gestures for us to sit down on the couch, and we do so. You want to know the true past between your mother and I, is that right? Yes, anything, everything. I want, I want to know whatever you'll tell me, Dad. It's a long story, so I apologize, but I'll try to explain as best as I can. I fell in love with Shizuka a long time ago when I wasn't much older than you, but she didn't have the time of day for me and I had to be very persistent with trying to get her attention. I had an overabundance of confidence back then, and so I asked her out easily. But your mother didn't outright say no or yes to me. She later told me that she knew she shouldn't get involved, but there was something about me that made her think twice. I don't know what it was, but I'm grateful for it. Eventually, I was able to convince her to go on a date with me. Father's eyes glazed over a bit, filled with nostalgia. I was so happy about it, I ran down the street screaming about it. He chuckles. I don't think I could have been more excited. But as luck would have it, during the date we were attacked and Shizuka was forced to protect us. That's when she finally explained to me who and what she was to me. But that just made me even more determined to be with her. I realized how lonely she must have been all those years, but Shizuka broke it off with me. She told me that she couldn't die. She said that she didn't want to sit there and watch me grow old and die while she remained unchanged. After I beat for a minute, Shizuka disappeared. I tried to move on with life. I even got married and we had Ko. That's when my wife died. I managed to track down Shizuka and she told me of what she did with you, Ori. How and why you were created. I think she expected me to leave after hearing how far she'd gone to get a chance at getting rid of her curse. But perhaps I'm a horrible person because I understood. I could see how desperate she was to be free, and when we got married and you were born, I resolved to always be a good father to you, Ori. Father finally fell silent, looking at nothing in particular. I can just I can tell just talking about this must have been very hard for him, but perhaps he was being crushed under the weight of this knowledge as much as I was bothered by not knowing. As for me, I have so many emotions, but mostly I feel so surly at finally hearing my mother's story. That she had her reasons, that dad really does love me, and that mother probably never hated me. Thank you, dad, for telling me about mom. Ori. I think, I think somewhere in my heart I, I already realized it, how truly desperate mother must have been. When I think about back to that day in the car, I remember that she wasn't acting normally. She was gripping the steering wheel so hard that she was almost shaking. I don't think mother went about getting rid of her curse in the best way, but in the way I'm but in a way I'm thankful for it. It's because of what she did I'm able to exist now. And because of that ritual that I was able to meet you and fall in love with him. She reaches across and grabs my hand, intertwining our fingers. I look at him surprised that he would do something like that in front of my father. But even when I look up at him, he doesn't let go. I still remember that time at the pier, how I had vowed that I'd do anything to see Shu again. To how I was determined to do anything possible to get him back. It was back then that I had been I had first been able to come to some kind of understanding about Shizuka's actions. And now I know, now I truly understand that she never wanted to do this. I feel like Shu Shu's touch and smile gives me strength, and so I find words tumbling out that I never thought I'd say. I think I think I I think I forgive Shizuka. I feel that I finally understand why she was so distant all those years, and if I could see her now, I think that maybe I'd like to try again to start a new relationship as mother, as mother and daughter. I I hope she'd let me anyway, because there's so much about her that I want to know and so much she could teach me. I look up and see that my father has tears in his eyes, oh he looks so sad man, so sad. Ori. I think she would love to hear that. 
I can't presume to always know what my darling is thinking, but I think somewhere deep inside, she's always wanted that kind of relationship too. A no more between a mother and a daughter. I find myself getting to my feet and walking over to my father. He stands up and I hug him tightly. The sudden emotional moment, even as she's starting to tear up beside me, I feel like a part of me that was stuck in the past can start moving forward again. I'll tell you in person one day, Mom. Then I'll learn about your life in your own words. The door first open, then, then and Kale strides in with a smile on her face. Hey guys, I just finished making dessert. K.O., I thought you were upstairs. You didn't hear any of that just now, did you? Oh, sorry. I got a call and had to come downstairs. I figured I might as well finish making dessert while I was on down here. Come on, guys. It's, it's a custard cream pie I made myself. K.O. starts to pull me by the arm and I let myself go with it. I'm not entirely convinced that K.O. didn't hear just hear any of that, but I smile at Shu and signal at him to come with us. I'll ask that later. He can tell me more about Jazuka, my mother. After everyone finally retired for the night, Chu and I move into my room. I love those curtains. They're kind of cute. Um, yeah. I, I'm kind of curious what her dad said when it was brought to his attention that her and Chu would be in the same room together. <laughs> I just feel like dads would be, like, threatening all the way. Except... Her dad seems pretty chill, actually. Despite the fact that she managed to forget his pajamas, I've changed into my own bed clothes. The funny thing is that he actually remembered to bring his keys for once. I feel a pleasant calmness watch over me at the sight of the familiar surroundings. It's been a while since I've stayed over here. It might feel a little strange to sleep in this bed again, especially with... My eyes fall into a very curious-looking shoe who sits himself on the edge of my bed. His eyes see in the dark everywhere, from the bed to the bookshelves, the little scratches on the door, and all the little trinkets that I've left here. It's not like we haven't, we haven't, but this is new. It's my family home, my dad and sister in this house. As I quietly watch you, my eyes travel to his lips down his jawline, neck, and, oh boy. <laughs> uh, no, what am I even doing right now? Stop it, Ori. This is not the place for that. It certainly is not the place for that. <laughs> I reluctantly turn my eyes away from him. It's getting late. We should get ready for bed. Oh. 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 <laughs> she jumps up, nearly tripping over his own feet. <laughs> um. Um. So, good night. He says this as he gets ready to lie down on the floor. I feel my lip twitch into a smile. <laughs> it's adorable. Shoo, what are you doing? Even though I know, I still ask. Despite being the brilliant actor that he is, she can't quite hide his nervousness from me. My dad isn't even that scary, really. He gets back up awkwardly rubbing the back of his neck. Following my example, Shu crawls into the tiny bed next to me. We whisper good nights that are all too loud in the otherwise soundless room. Hmm. My ass feel heavy, but I can't seem to fall asleep. I can't tell how much time has passed since we went to bed. I don't even want to check. She lies next to me completely still. Even without touching, I can feel the heat radiating off his body. It's amazing how he always so warm. All of a sudden, he moves and turns his whole body towards me. Can't sleep either? He asks me, his voice just barely above a whisper. I turn to my side to face you. Yeah, I'm tired, but for some reason I can't fall asleep at all. I think it just feels so strange to be back here at home with my family. And it's nice to have you here with me. It feels different, but a nice different. She smiles sweetly at me. He reaches out and touches and gently touches my cheek. Shu's warm, soft touch tickles my skin. His fingers slowly trail across my chin. He looks up at me so seriously with such a look of, of con <laughs> concentration. It's as if I'm the most important thing in the world to him. His thumb gently caresses my lips. It tickles a little bit, and I find myself giggling. Ori. <laughs> Shu's hand slides down, wrapping his arm around my waist and pulling me close into in one rough move. My heart nearly jumps, seeing the sight of him. Oh man, this is happening. This is totally happening. 
in my head, I know we shouldn't do anything like this. Kayla's room is right next door, but she seems to sense my hesitation. She's, his soft whisper has a kind of roughness to it as he speaks. If you're worried about Kale, don't. I think I heard her say she was sneaking out tonight with some Yuki guy. I'm still curious about Yuki. I feel like it's a, uh, a. Uh, God, what is his name? Is it Tatsuya? I feel like it's Tatsuya. I don't know why, but I feel like it's Tatsuya, or Takumi. I, it, I don't know. For some reason, it it feels like it's one of one of the one of those two. Not sure though. Sneaking out with Yuki. Dad would probably yell at Ko if he found out. But if that's actually true, it means that Kate was not here. Since so you were so quiet that I can scarcely be sure of what I heard. So, would you give yourself to me tonight? <laughs> What a charmer. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I'm gonna keep going, cause like, why not? <laughs> I'll risk it then. With my body pressed up against like this, it's become harder and harder to think anyway. I grip his shoes so she pulls him closer still and turns, pulling me on top of him. My heart beats wildly against my chest at the thought of getting caught in this position. She continues to quietly look at me, a small tugging at his lips. With my hands on his chest, I can feel his heart beating hard and fast. Slowly I lean down and seal, seal his lips with mine. Shoes arm tighten around me, one of his hands travels under my shirt. He slowly lightly trails his fingers up and down my back. A pleasant chill shoots through my whole body as his finger dance on my skin. Mm. <laughs> I can't help but come down that his face might look. She lips travel down my jawline as his head moves lower and lower. His hot lips on my neck hands roaming over my body. I'm feeling his heart body under mine. The way his rapid, dragged breath warms my already heated skin. All of it fills my senses and I bite down on their moments, forming in the back of my throat, threatening to escape. Even though I know Kale could be next door or right behind the wall, I don't want to stop. I slip my hand under his clothes. His skin feels like fire under my fingers. She shivers at my touch, she presses his head back into the pillow, and only a quiet groan escapes his lips. I fight back a grin in between my mistress and join to see his shoes squirm under me. Ari. His whisper is colored in desperation. Even in the darkness, see his golden eyes shine with overwhelming need. He melts his move, she flips us over, and I find myself on my back instead. She grins and leans down close to me, whispering. I hope you can stay quiet tonight. I can't. Oh my god. This is so, this is so, this is so ridiculous. This is so ridiculous. Oh my god. The room is filled with the sounds of clothes falling to the floor, rather breaths and strings with moans until dawn. Well then, that's where we're ending that. <laughs> well guys, so, yeah. Huh. It's only three chapters though, so I'm kind of curious um, what's going to happen now. Especially with the title like that, A Dark Precursor. Oh man, I'm just not, I don't even know right now. This is, uh, this is going to be, it's going to be interesting. But um, yeah, I hope you guys like what just happened. Because <laughs> I do, even though it sends me into laughter. Because imagining Ori and Chu doing that is just, it's interesting. Because they're both just adorable. Um, anyway, I will see you guys in the second chapter. I think we're just going to stick to one chapter a video just for this. I know I did two for like the last couple of the main story. Anyway, um, let me know how you liked it. And I'll see you guys next Monday. Bye.